Luca Nation, episode 671, weekend edition of Lucas Tigers and Bronzo Mai. The triple logo, man, I think they I think these guys are coming back, by the way. Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. I think they're actually making like a movie or another show of them. You make fun of my shirt a bunch of times, but I think they're actually coming back. But Is yeah, that man, like the Alvin logo, and the Chipmunks? Kind of Alvin it, and the it's, Chipmunks? It's, it's adult? Disney. It's Chip and Dale. Like they were like an offshoot, I think, of Donald Duck, like Don, old Donald Duck comics and Donald Duck cartoons. I remember a Christmas one when I was a kid where, you know, I think they, they Donald cuts down a tree and the, the chipmunks are actually in the tree. And then they became their own little character, Chip and Dale. And then they had their own show, Rescue Rangers. It was pretty cool. It was a, it was a fun little show. I like it. Um, kind of, it's kind of like us. It reminds me yeah, of us. With, <laughs> with the Rescue Rangers. Listen, we are here to rescue this hobby. We are here. But not the hobby uh, overall because the hobby's been here for a long damn time. You know what you I mean? Just like the stock market, up, like the hobby, it almost up. feels it almost feels uh, like a big dr- dramatic comedy movie. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, think about it. Think about coming full circle. And by the way, guys, best sports card podcast in the world. Subscribe, like, leave a comment. But yeah, smash some buttons, like the smash buttons, do the thing. Hey, you know what? Take a pause for a second. All right? Sure. If you're listening to this, or you're watching it on YouTube, and you have the ability to grab your phone or your computer. Um, Things run and things come down, right? Um, I purchased some Shopify stock in 2018 for a hundred dollars a share. Go take a look at the Shopify stock chart, okay? Go take a look at the. Go take a look at the. Go, but it depends. Go take a look at the Netflix stock chart. Go take a look at, um, you know, any of these recent tech, um, Pandora. I mean, go take take a look at these 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 companies, right? And what you're going to notice is I bought Shopify at 100 bucks. It was at its high at like $1,500, and now it's down to three and change. So do a, you, you, very well done. Thank you. You did a five-year chart. Now, it's like this, 100%. It's like this, but it's also like this and like this. If you look at the last year, it's down. You look at the last six months chart, it's horribly down. It's down 70%, right? I mean, it's a good good chart to look at this stuff, right? So when COVID you know, hit, it, guys, just see so of context, is about 390. Right. So so it's right back to where it was before COVID hit. It had an amazing run up, and it's right back to where it was before COVID hit. You know, a very elongated middle finger type of chart. And why do I bring this up, right? I bring it up because it wasn't just our little corner of the world that saw this kind of run up. You'll probably see something similar in a, you know, less elongated chart of Bitcoin, right? See the high, see the low, see where we are, see where we started, and the whole nine yards. And, um, you know, I, I take a pause, and obviously we're going to do, you know, the PWCC stuff today because, you know, PWCC weekly auction is tomorrow. But I just want to kind of, you know, let, let folks know we're not we're not unique in the sports card hobby with what's going on. You know, I get a lot of messages, and, you know, we talk to a lot of people at shows and stuff, and people say, oh, my God, the hobby is just crazy. It was a complete, it was a complete pump. It, it pumped up, and now it's fake, and I'm leaving the hobby. Okay, you know, you're leaving the hobby. You're sharing that, by the way. Um, oh, I'm trying to because I think it's a great point. So you just talked about Shopify. COVID hit was 350. You're just sharing now an that... email. Oh, really? Yeah. It's not sharing my. Uh, no, it says stuff. PWCC spreadsheet for a weekly auction. So it's just your email that's being shared. Cool. Let me share the right one. Here it is. So I wanted to share Bitcoin because I love what you're where you're going with that. I didn't want to cut you off, but so. Shopify was 350 when COVID hit back to 370, basically back down to where it was. Yeah, back to Bitcoin. where it was. Yep. March 20th, 2020, COVID hit $6,198. Yep. So Bitcoin actually hasn't come down. It's still 6 It's holding very strong if, if you kind of but stretch out that graph. It was down 50% from where it was, right? And, you mm-hmm. know, obviously it's different windows. And that's the point, guys. You know, what's funny about it is. If you were to ask, um, I think I saw this once, so I don't want—I don't want to say I'm making it up because I think it's in my brain. And maybe I saw it on Twitter or Instagram, whatever it was. If you ask, you know, the richest person you know, how they became that rich, maybe what they'll do is they'll draw for you uh, two side-by-side charts, right? And one of them is going to say five months, and it's going to go like this. It's going to be like this. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be wonky. It's going to look like a heart monitor. Ups, downs, ups, downs. But then next to that, they draw a chart that says five years, and you're just going to see a slow and steady up. Those blips, those ups, those downs, the crazy ride, 
they're not there because when you stretch the line out enough, you stretch the chart out enough, it's just a steady move up. And I think that's kind of like the horizon. And and what's funny about it is it, it's I think at its base, it's what Chris and Josh from you know their crossover episode and you know the the the, the car letter guys. It's what I think they're trying to say with the collector versus investor thing. And it becomes kind of an us versus them. It becomes sort of a, you know, sharks versus jets, Montagues and Capulets, whatever, whatever you want to use. Right. But I think they're really, what they're trying to say is don't be so short sighted with your charts. Don't look at the hobby the way you'd look at, you know, a sports bet. You know what I mean? Look at it more of a long term kind of thing. Right. And that, if you were to slash anything, you know, in a in a five day or or you know one month chart, you're gonna see a whole bunch of of fluctuations. See a lot of this, um, and you may even be able, you know, depending on how you slice it, see down, right? See some downward trending. Every one of those things we just showed you there, whether it's Shopify, which is up, you know, slightly in the last two years, and definitely up. I mean, from 2018 when I bought it at 100, it's 3x over like you know four years, right? Um, with Bitcoin, it's 6x over a couple of years. If you were to take the last couple of months, however, of all of those charts, the card ladder index, the hobby overall, Bitcoin, Ethereum, NFTs, Bored Apes, you know, Shopify, Netflix, whatever the heck you want to talk about, right? They all over the short term have a downward indicator. Everyone's feeling the same short term pain. Right, so it's not just the hobby, and I, I try to, you know, I try to do this for a reason, right? Because people are like ah, these cards. This was just a crazy run up, and it's the charts are almost identical to all these other asset classes, right? All these other things that people invest in. Shoot. Here's here's what where I'm listening and thinking as you go. In 2018, the people, not just that were in cards, the people that were investing in general, that. Population, do you think it's bigger, smaller, or the same as it is now? I think there's more people involved in everything now. <laughs> I think so too, right? So I think if you take that the message that people have, be careful buying at the top or think long term. It's the people that are buying in on the run-up that after COVID happened, they were sitting at home, they got a twelve hundred dollar stimulus check. They opened a Robinhood account. They opened a Coinbase account. They started dabbling in cards. They got into NFTs, but they were not buying it when Shopify was 100. They were buying when Shopify was 1,000, hoping to see the same kind of crazy run-up. And because this is their first time in this, in this cycle, people want to be like, yo, be careful. You can get burned. If you're coming in expecting the same results that you had the last three years, that's unrealistic. I'm with Any you. truth to that? I think it's 100% right, right? You, you know, you, but just because you bought in on a run-up doesn't mean, one, you should sell now at a loss, or two, there won't be another run-up, right? If you look at those charts, if you go back to 2015, 16 on the Bitcoin chart and zoom out, you have exactly the same kind of pattern. Right, it ran a little and kind of came back down. If you if you look at other stocks, you look at other things, you see run ups and come back down. Um, you know, the Jordan market had a run up and then came back down. You know, Michael Jordan. You look at the indexes, and it's the same kind of thing. So that's number one. It doesn't now do. If you bought it at the exact high, you know, am I telling you right now, hold, 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 and everything will be fine? It depends on what you bought, and that is another thing. And one of the cool things about sports, right? I mean, you could do this with stocks if you do enough research on a company and you pick the right company stock and you think that stock's going to do better or it's going to be a great business and blah, blah, blah. You could do better. But I mean, with sports, because there is this, this daily performance, there is this you know, performance that it can impact the price of, of, uh, you know, of these assets, you, know, you can, if you watch the games, if you do the research, if, you, you know, if you're in it, you can, you, know, you can find yourself doing better. You know what I mean? Like if you're a Dallas Mavericks fan, like Manny on our show, right? You know, Luca Nation Manny. Everybody loves Luca Nation Manny. Hope you're feeling all right there, pal. Dude had his wisdom tooth taken out and then still managed to get himself going to the daddy-daughter dance. So big shout out to you. Um, but, you know, someone like him should have, and I don't think he did, but should have because of his Dallas Mavericks knowledge, should have known that if he bought in the beginning of this year some Brunson cards – 
right? If he would have been on Brunson towards the end of the year, watching how Brunson, when given an opportunity, was able to flourish while Luca was injured and then play alongside Luca, maybe he could have bought a whole bunch of Brunson cards for pennies on the dollar for what they're selling for now. The dude had 28 points in the playoff game last night and took down the Suns. Does, are they going to win the whole thing? Who knows? But it's just a, a, an example that's that's top of mind today after Dallas winning yesterday. And I did say Luca would find a way to find win at least one game. That was my prediction. But I mean, if you look at Brunson's cards, you know, hey, look at that nice chart. I would imagine, you know, look, it's coming down and probably may even go back up. Maybe they win the series. Maybe go back. But if you happen to buy Brunson cards, They're you know. Honest couple months ago, I know they're not winning, but look at what it's doing, right? It's up 134% on the index. That's a lot. So this is why I love sports. This is why sports is fun, right? You know, you can you can mix in some Brunson, some Mikel Bridges, as you've thrown in there. I like Devontae Graham. His index is probably crappy, if there even is such an index. You know, but you know, you you, you take you take your shots, you you know, you learn about your guys, you invest in your guys. It makes it fun. I guess the, the point here is you know, there's different ways of doing it, but if you look at it with a long-term view, one, you can you can build a portfolio that way, right? You can mix in some Brunson high risk, high rewards, could go to zero, but could also go up 134% with your assets that you buy over the long term, right? With the ones that you hold, right? Your Tom Brady's, your Babe Ruth, your Ty Cobbs, your Michael Jordans, you know? Throw in some Luca and some Ja, some Messi, LeBron, Kobe, Tom Brady, and get a notice. My lead into today is if you're able to look at this for a longer term, some of the cards that we're talking about that are going to be found today in PWCC's weekly auction that ends Sunday night are those type of blue chip. Every name I just said are the names we're going to talk about. From Babe Ruth to Kobe Bryant, from Tom Brady to even John Moran. So which one do so you want to look at to first, P- my friend? Let's get into PWCC. By the way, my guy Alcaraz beat Djokovic. Back to back days, he beat Nadal and he beat Joker. And you for know a nineteen-year-old cool? kid, it's pretty impressive stuff. You, is you he going to fizzle cool, out now, though? Is he going to have a letdown? Because he he just took out what the two and the one seed, and he's a seven. So now he's going to play in the finals against either a three or a four seed. Is he going to have a letdown against a no name in the Madrid it's, Open? It's not a no name. It's either Severov or uh, Tsitsipas. <laughs> so, no, no. so to everyone here's else the, in the world, it's a no name. Here's the Tsitsipas. Cool thing. You, you've watched a little bit of tennis. You watched golf. A little bit. You know, you know, boa constrictor. You know how they don't have a venomous bite, but they squeeze the life out of their opponent. Yes, out of their prey. What I saw watching that match is that Alcaraz is he squeezes the life out of these legends of the game. It's not that he accidentally beats them. It's his level of game gets better and better as the match goes on. He's pr- there's some of the sh- does that make sense? So, like Tiger used to do this. He would squeeze the life. Like the final round, you, you, the two best players or the two people that are leading are paired up. And then I mean, you had me, team. you had me with 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 tennis, uh, I, because it's a one on one, and I could see you physically squeezing the life out of somebody by 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 you know just making them run, by making them work, by being nineteen when they're one hundred and twelve years old, and just really physically squeezing them. The tiger is more mental. But the the, it's the same thing. The it's the same thing. It's that it's unrelenting. It's the unrelenting. It's like I got more. I got more. I got more. I mean, you know what? You know what that reminds me of? I mean, not a boa constrictor. It reminds me of Olive Garden. I mean, no matter how much I go in there ready to eat and take them down, the salad and breadsticks just keep on coming, man. It's so unrelenting. Don't, no don't matter what, the, the waitress comes over and she says, I got more. I'll eat the breadsticks. I'll dip it in the salad dressing. I'll eat a pepperoncini. I'll eat, and I got more. I mean, it's unrelenting. They always beat me every we single used to time. Get, we used to get Olive Garden before our um, soccer matches for, mm-hmm. for Drexel. But our coach would always say, just because it's free doesn't mean it's for me. Like, don't just overeat <laughs> because everything is free and it's unlimited <laughs> breadsticks. Um, <laughs> all right. Backyard breaks. Trevor Lawrence, kaboom. They pull – the triple logo, man. It's irony across the board. It's hilarious. I mean, it's a dark drama. It's Shakespearean. Thoughts? Yeah, my thoughts are good for them. My thoughts are they never screwed me. And I think, you know, ultimately they made one mistake, which was heavily publicized. And people make mistakes. I don't think there's anyone in this hobby who is mistake free. 
<laughs> no, come on. If don't you read some throw of comments, stones. Don't throw stones if you live in a glass house. And if you got a glass jaw, watch I'm your gonna mouth. break your mouth. Watch, watch your, your mouth. mouth. I'm going to break your face. Leave your ears open like one of them Michael Jackson jackets with all them zippers. Patiently waiting. Little M&M. Like that little little, uh, little fitty. So, so it, look, we talked about their ridiculous kaboom thing, and we said, look, they'll learn from this. They'll get better. They'll do their stuff. This is a numbers game, man. You know, they open a lot of stuff. And I'll give credit where credit's due. These are a, a bunch of kids who are making a ton of money, right? And they're having fun, obviously, right? And they're selling stuff, and they're providing a service for people. I'm sure the guy who spent uh, – or, or woman, I don't know who it is, but the, the, the individual who spent $1,800 to get the spot in the break that pulled this multi-million dollar LeBron card is happy that they bought into Backyard Breaks. You know, they could have bought in anywhere else. They could have listened to the talking heads in the hobby and say, don't give Backyard Breaks your money, and they'd be out a couple million dollars right now. So, yeah, so my thoughts, that, that's my thoughts. I mean, you know, how long are you going to – a snap judgment mistake on a card. How long are you gonna keep the guys, you know, pinned up for that? What else did they do that, that you know, you know, warrants this now, right? So they had a great break, you know. I mean, and 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 think about numbers, right? Like I'm sure they broke more flawless than you know, 99 percent of people who are breaking flawless, right? They're they a break bunch a of breakers. Of, they're they a break a lot breaker. of product. They break a lot of product. When you break a lot of product, you're gonna get the hits. I, I know because. You know, when I was doing UFC and no one else was, I sometimes would break 10, 15, 20% of a product release myself personally. And I get a lot of one ones. And I got a lot of good hits and a lot of good autos. But if you're breaking enough of the product, chances are the good stuff, the product hits, were going to come to you. You know? Here, and so it doesn't my, surprise me. Here's my ask there's always going to be the people that are cynics. You're never going to change a true cynic. I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to the people that are in the middle. And there's a lot of people that are really happy for, for everyone in the hobby. There's a lot of really supportive people. But this group in the middle, I urge or I ask, if you guys listen to the show, try to find it in you to be happy, not just in the hobby, just in life for other people's success. What you'll find is it's actually a really selfish thing to do. Because once you become happy for other people, what I found is the world rewards you, you start noticing other things that make you happy and make you successful. So I, I found that karma works in a really interesting way is when you start to be happy for other people's success, whether that's your family members, complete strangers or your friends, you start to realize their success isn't your failure and the world karma, whatever you want to call it, starts to reward you with the things that you want. Uh, so it's actually a pretty selfish ask, um, but it's, 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 um, it's interesting. It's an interesting law of life that you learn. So I love it. And you're right, right? I mean, like the way it's told to me, right, is, you know, you don't make your light shine brighter by blowing out somebody else's, right? You don't make your candle shine brighter by blowing out somebody else's candle, right? Your cereal doesn't taste better if you pee in theirs. I mean, pretty much, yeah. That's that's the deal, right? So, and I have to learn that myself, right? Because, you know, between the two of us, why the yin-yang works but it's not a you learn. are the optimist but, and I'm a sick. But it's not a learn cage. It's a practice. You know what you know what I mean? Because you know it. Yeah, but everyone knows but it, it. It's just hard to practice it. I get it. So let me throw a little cold water on the events of the day because I wouldn't be cage if I couldn't, if I couldn't do this. But you know, we had Eric Shemtov from Whatnot on. And Whatnot took some heat for this too. I don't know why. I mean, I don't know why what you know, like think think about what they're doing here, right? And I know I talked about this. Like at the end of our episode, I said you know, we, we should be thrilled to be, you know, operating in the hobby the way it is now, because you can have the crossover, you could have the, you know, the, the high level chart talks, the value talks, the collector talks, the, I'm able to get this card I want, you know, the chase and, and all that stuff, right. And, and, and the serious stuff and mix that with what, what not brings to the hobby too. think about the excitement, think about, you know, the, the fun going and chasing this card and, and giving away a Lamborghini, you know, and, and I mean, to be, to be frank, right? I mean, like, it's great to have both ends of that spectrum, right? You know, you could have fun and you could have, you know, seriousness. You could have investors. You could have collectors. You could have flippers. You could have chases, treasure hunts, just cool stuff that's going on, right? So so I, I was excited for that. And then they kind of just, you know, like, people crap on it. But I go back to that episode where I, I asked Eric. I said, you know, like, like eventually, you know, you spoil your kids, right? 
like I, I have kids, right? And it's like, okay, if, if you know, my daughter gets a pony for her fifth birthday, well, what am I going to do for a sixth? Right. Eventually, I'm going to have to buy her two ponies, and then I'm going to have to buy, uh, you know, a, a, a car and a house, and you know, like you just you you got to keep topping it, right? Every year, you got to go better than than the last, right? And I asked Eric about this because now you're giving away a, a Lamborghini. What are you going to do with the National? Because if you just give away, you know, a Kia or a Honda, people will be like, what? what? How come we get screwed, you know? Low-key Kia, Kias are killing it, by the way. So, so let me now extrapolate that thing to this. What happens when Flawless comes out next year and they have a, a chase card in it that has LeBron's logo from when he was on the Cavs, LeBron's logo from when he was on the Heat, a LeBron logo from a number 23 jersey, a LeBron logo from a number six jersey for the Lakers. Let's call it a quadruple logo. Or they take that extra logo, they make it a triple logo, but on card they have LeBron sign it. Because Flawless needs to have a chase next year. So what happens next year when they just have to increase the, you know, the just up the ante one little bit, right? Because you have to, right? You can't, you can't. Tw- does anybody out there really believe that the 2021 flawless product is going to be what Panini rests on? That they're just going to all have a board meeting and say, you know what? We hit the pinnacle of chase cards with our triple LeBron logo, man. Let's just pack it in. You know, let's make the chase one this year. Uh, I don't know. Let's put Jalen Brunson on a card. You know, maybe we'll find some old Joakim Noah, you know, I mean, stuff. What, what could happen between this year and next year, too? So it's hard to know what the like chase what? will be. Like. Well, right, that's a Giannis but, but they're going to do a chase, right? What if it's a Giannis yeah. logo, man? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Giannis, Giannis, Giannis can win 500 championships. And they can put all 500 logos from the game. He clinched the championship. It doesn't make a difference. Now, LeBron, unless they got Michael Jordan, it's, it's not comparable. My point hmm. is, you know, LeBron, just make it simple. Forget about another player. All they would have to do is take the triple logo LeBron's and have him sign on, on card. And make okay. it a one-of-one one autographed triple logo man. Okay. Like, what does that do for this card? Because the, the valuation that people have on the card, that it's worth $6 million, $8 million, champagne poppies all, you know, getting money and, you know, he's, he's, he's got no friends in the industry who want to sell him this card, right? So, so does it devalue it? And it's interesting, right? Because people don't think like this. This is a, a lot of what I've been thinking about the last couple of days when we talk about the, the pops changing. Right, we talk about you know whether or not my Pele is worth less when I buy it and it's it's highest graded pop three, and then within a couple of months it's pop five and there's one higher, right? Even though it's a sixty five year old card, we talk about this with like the Lewis Hamilton stuff, right? We talk about this with with that Futera card. It also applies to this, right? LeBron can't you, you sign. Can't, I know LeBron can't sign. I'm just using this as an example. I know LeBron is signed by Upper Deck. You're 100 percent right. I, I um, you understand they're where gonna, I'm going with it. They're going right? to do a blank flawless next year to up this. It's just going to be a blank card with random signatures. I mean, they tried to do that with the team gems cards, which, by the way, I, if you own one of these, I'm sorry for saying this. I think that's one of the dumbest things in the world. You know, the, who it's got cares like the, the what horse. Do next year? And the, well, everyone should care what they're going to do next year because what they do, that's not a rookie card, right? Right? It's a, it's a triple logo card. Like they could do a triple logo every year of LeBron. Yeah, but the card is more attention grabby than valuable. We we call okay. it a five million dollar card, but I don't think it's a five, it's a million dollar card. So all maybe great conversation. it's not that iconic. People are, people are talking it's about it being cool. ten million. Good. So this is why we're having that conversation. I I tend to agree with you, but people are holding it out as if it's a ten million dollar card, eight million dollar card. It's the grail of all grails in the hobby, and maybe that's salesmanship. Maybe that's breakers. Maybe that's what not saying that because they wanted to you know build up and drum up some craziness. Who the heck knows? But I guess what what I'm saying is. It's a good lesson, right? Because every year there's something else that gets chased. Is the point? And you don't. Really, LeBron can't sign. LeBron can't sign. You're 100 percent right. It's. I was just trying to make it like, put four. Well, what's better than three? It's like, oh, seven second abs. No. Well, what what if they come out with six second abs? No, 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 not six. It's seven. It's seven. Got to get the heart rate going. You step into my office. You know, like they're always looking to one up, and you know that's what companies do, right? So. Anyway, it is just my thought, right? Like what is iconic about this card? Yeah, it's pretty pretty sweet. But it's ten million dollars for real. Ten million dollars. Eight million dollars. You know, really? I mean, they, there'll be another chase next year, guys. 
Yeah, it's. I don't think it's as much about the price. It's as, as much. It's more about the originality and the hype that comes with LeBron's name, uh, logo man's from all of his uh, teams. I think it's more that than the actual value of the card. That's just my own opinion. Let's get into a, a quick PWCC recap and then uh, get to watching these games. Yeah, let's do some. Do some PWCC. So listen, we got a cool one, right? You know, you want to talk about iconic? It's a problem, of course. It's, you know, licensed, non-licensed, all that stuff, right? Can you pull up the 2019 National Treasures Babe Ruth Ty Cobb in the this weekly is, auction? Yeah, this is sick. It is sick. 2019 National Treasures Babe Ruth Ty Cobb. You want, you want to talk about like a cool piece? I know it's not three pieces of Levon's jersey. But if you scroll down into the weekly, you can just write Ty Cobb, Babe Ruth, all in the search term. And I'm sure there's only one that will come up. Ty Cobb, Babe Ruth. Look at that beast. Ridiculously large holder from Beckett. I mean, you got to do something about that, right? It's like, you know, it's like a magazine holder. But zoom in on that. Why did they that do is, that? It's ridiculous, the holder. I, I, I mean, but I guess it's protected. So... It is what it is. It's ridiculous what the old here. is. <laughs> uh oh, don't show anybody. Don't, nobody looking. No, don't, don't look at this. Don't look at this password. Don't look at this password. Don't look at how much money he has. He owes money. And yeah, dude, you're I'm... sharing your screen. You're giving all you're giving all the secrets away. People are gonna be buying stuff on your account the whole the whole time. It's gonna be amazing. Anyway, listen, while listen, Wally's talking about it. This is Ty Cobb and Babe Ruth cut autographs on a one of one card that's been graded BGS 85. It was part, it was, I would say, the Chase card from 2019 National Treasures Baseball cut signature. Take a look at this. This is pretty damn sweet. Right? What does cut signature mean, Cage? It means it's, it's a signature that has been cut out of a larger item, right? So, like, if you find, if you find, like, um, you know, like a, a um, George Washington signs. You could have the whole document, the ship manifest, the you know the the appointment of some federal judge, a whole document, or it's just cut out of a document and it's just his signature on it. So it's just so they, it, they it, buy the document from a they, document. They buy the document, make the card, put cut the cut the document signature out, put it into the card. Right. So this particular one might have had other autos on it. And maybe they made this card out of it. Maybe Lou Gehrig is on it, or maybe Christy Matheson's on it. Maybe they put him on another card, right? Maybe it's you know the initial guys who are in the um, the Hall of Fame induction, the initial class of the Hall of Fame, or something like that. Maybe somebody got it signed, or maybe the you know someone got it signed on an autograph book, and the page is ripped. And these are you know this by cutting it this way, they're able to get these guys' signatures. But I mean, take a look at this thing. You know, I mean. This is okay, just crazy. the most I could, I could zoom in. I mean, it's it's not ideal. So you guys will have it's to look right. it up yourself. Yeah. You, you have to take a look at it. But, I mean, it's got, you know, it's got pieces in it on both both guys. It is it, uh, just a pretty crazy piece. I got to tell you, before this came off for auction, I didn't even know this card existed. But you're talking about Cobb, Ruth, Patch Autos. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's a weird, weird and awesome looking card. And when people are talking about – um eight to ten million dollars for three pieces of jersey of of um lebron as we stand i think this is at seven thousand dollars and it's ty cobb babe ruth signed right yep seven thousand dollars seven grand do you think it matters that that this is graded like do you think it'd be the same exact price if it was just yeah i mean authentic or whatever it may be. Yes. I, I don't think it matters that it's graded per se. I think it adds a little level of like, you know, authentication to it and, 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 and the like, you know, it protects it that it's in a slab. It's a one-on-one though. It's not like somebody's going to next week pull out the same thing in a BGS nine or a PSA 10. So I just thought that was a cool segue value wise. As we talk about a non-signed, three pieces of LeBron James jerseys in a card selling for $10 million, you now have one card with a cut auto of Cobb and Babe Ruth in it, and it's $7,000. Just, I figured it was a nice little, you know, counter positive. I don't think it's going to say it's $7,000, but that is a sweet card. Um, you want to stick with, let's see, are there any other baseball cards we wanted to talk about? we got some hockey, a lot of basketball, some soccer. There's um, one other baseball card that I saw. 
that you know, Stephanie I mean, Cage, right? May f- coming up. Uh, oh, not May eighth, not tomorrow, but next week. There's a top Tiffany Barry Bonds ending. Yep, that's next week. So you mm-hmm. want to go with the tops card that I like for baseball? Let me give you two baseball cards that I liked. Type in Desert Shield. That is one S in Desert Shield. PSA ten, and see what pops up for me. Two S's not- in Desert. Right, you remember how you know how I remember that? How? Strawberry shortcake is a dessert. Two S's. Strawberry shortcake. So you remember, desert, you know, D E S S. Desert Shield. Strawberry shortcake is dessert. Two S's in dessert. One S in are desert. You, are you seeing no. my uh, my screen? Yep. So that is the oh, one. I'm you've talked about right this there. card before. A this million Jones times. Card. It's rare as hell. It is amazing, rookie. I mean, whether you're a Triple Jones fan or not, there's a lot to this card. Um, this is these are these are the tops desert shields that were given away to the troops. So not a lot of them survived, and even the ones that did, there is never going to be enough supply in PSA ten to ever hit the you know the amount of demand that there is on this. This is Chipper Jones rookie card, nineteen ninety one tops desert shield Chipper Jones PSA ten. I've bid on these myself in the past. It is a five figure card. It always has been for the last however many years, you know, I bid significantly more than what it's currently sitting at myself. Um, this is $7,000 also, just like the Cobb is where it's at. I, I, <laughs> I would be shocked if it remains here um, because it's just one of those cards that, you know, there are Chipper Jones collectors. This is like top of the list for Chipper Jones. There are tops rarity collectors. There are low pop collectors. And I think a card like this, just like the Tiffany cards that, that I mention all the time on our show, um, you know how we saw Moses Malone's 1975 card sell for um, you know some crazy amount of money, right? It, it, the 1975 tops Moses Malone rookie, right? Um, that one sold the, like 102, 96. Right, you know, all kinds of all kinds of you know. Um, I think one of them sold for like eighty something recently, right? So um, you're noticing that people are looking at that now. These these quote unquote all time greats, top fifty, top seventy five players, Hall of Fame players that have rookie cards that are um, you know low pop, and they've become valuable because people are either building sets or people are chasing those guys and 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 you name it. This Chipper Jones, um, you know, card, I think it's card 333. Um, I want to get the pop for you. I should have had that loaded up before, um, you know, before I started talking about it. But I will get it. Desert Shield, of course, PSA. Um, But, you know, I think that that Moses Malone one had like 39 or 35. They were just, there's not a lot of them. And his Chipper Jones, there's 31. 31 PSA 10s. That's all. So, I mean, you think about that for a sec, right? There's, you know, there's a lot of these cards graded overall, but not a lot of PSA 10s. <laughs> not a lot of PSA 10s at all. I've talked well, the about The last this. one sold, according to Card Ladder Cage, is March 17th of last year was the last sale. And it was sold yeah, last year I'm for sure 21,000. 21K. Five, Five-figure cards, a five-figure card all the time, five-figure card all day, right? Even before that, back in 2020, this card sold for 14. One in May of 2020 sold for 19.8. So this is just one that doesn't come up for for auction often. It's the first one that's been available for sale this year. There was only one for sale in all of last year, even with all of the craziness, you know, that happened in, in you know in cards last year with stuff coming out of the woodwork. So it's one that I immediately gravitated to when I saw the listings. Um, of 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 this week's auctions, uh, and if it stays anywhere near where it's at, somebody's getting a steal. So just you know, one to note. There's one other baseball card I wanted to note, um, and then we can kind of you know get back on the you know the list and do the whole deal. Can you back out and search? And this is pretty easy. Sure. Um, you could just type 1949 Jackie, right? Um, so that's where we're going with that. Obviously, you know, you, you if you're if you're there, you can you know you already know that um, that it's not a rookie because it's not 48, but it's 1949 Jackie. And you'll take a look when when Andrew pulls it up. 1949 Jackie. Wow, this is, oh okay, I was like, wow, there's a lot. 
Now, when it's a stream, it takes a little bit longer. My computer is a little there slow. Nice. Nicely okay. centered one, too. Okay, so that is the point. I'm glad. So we don't prep these ahead of time, guys. But that's why I pulled this one out, right? This is only a PSA 2. But this particular 1949 Bowman Jackie Robinson PSA 2 is nicer than many of the fives that I've seen. Not only does it have a great centering, like Andrew said, which is what we look for on, 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 on vintage cards, but it also has great registration. Zoom in on it again. And take a look. You can see his face. There's no, like, pixelation. A lot of these, they have, like, blurry cards and stuff like that. You know, this particular card, um, you know, in two, there's plenty of them, right? I think it's 100 and something twos. You know, this card, they go all the way up to eights. There's 1,300 of them graded, which, you know, when you compare to modern cards, it doesn't sound like a lot. But as far as vintage cards go, it's one of those things that, you know, that it's not exactly the scarcest card out there. Um, but, but. If you're looking to get in on a Jackie Robinson card, right, and, and this particular card, and and try to find one in the in the two range, right, this card presents like it's a four or a five. And if you're able to buy the card, I mean, where it's at now, thirty two hundred, the last two sold for about that, and look nothing like this, right? A three sells for five and change. The last three, I think, sold in January for like five and change. This is. I mean, this is as nice, if not nicer, than most three. So I just yep. bring it to the attention of folks who, who are out there because, you know, if you happen to be looking for, a, you know, an early Jackie Robinson, great color, red behind it, um, and you can get this one for where it's at now, which is the price for an average two, a blurry two, an off-centered two, and get this particular card, which is, you know, it doesn't look like a two. It's definitely, you know, more valuable than than the average two because of its eye appeal. It's got the PWCC designation of A, which I, I believe means top fifteen percent. So crazy stuff. I love it. Let's keep rocking. I want to see the back. Okay, you want to do like, yeah. I mean, you can take a look at the back. It, it's this is a gorgeous card, right? Vintage cards. You know, you you could probably look at, you know, fifty other twos and not find one that's as nice as this. You probably look at a couple of dozen threes and not find one that's as nice as this. So it's just one that, again, you know, I go through these auctions. I spend a couple of hours kind of going through, um, you know, taking a look at the cards. And and the, these three that I've mentioned, those are, these are cards that kind of st stood out to me uh, personally. Um, you know, another one. Let's just yeah, let's just let's just do it, right? So obviously that Ty Cobb one stood out to me. Um, let's get into basketball. We could bounce around. There's a LeBron card that I mean, guys, you could see. I go through it and just to prep for the show, I pull out four. Just like I do for a collectible, I pull out, like I just look at the data and stuff like that. I pull out the stuff. The top one on the list is this LeBron. It's the, um, you know, I don't know how you find it. There's probably a lot of LeBrons in here, Andrew. But um, this particular one is the 2004 Exquisite Collection LeBron James Patch Auto DNA 10. It's an authentic card. So obviously these thick cards, sometimes, you know, they have some issues with it. People authenticate them, you know, instead of great, getting a six grade on. There it is right there. But the auto itself is a 10. Now, this is a second year exquisite. Numbered out of 100. LeBron. Sick little patch there, right? You got the maroon. You got the gold. You got the white. You got three color patch on both sides, right? So it's a nice stripe patch. And um, you got the LeBron auto on here. And it's under $10,000 out of 100. Under ten grand. I mean, this is like you know, it, it's a second year patch auto. The auto itself is gorgeous. Take a look at the signature on it, right? I mean, like mm -hmm. you know, some of the LeBron autos don't look as nice. I would as find this, this, this is interesting a page. So it says PSA one of three, five graded higher. So let's say eight of them in PSA. Where are the other ninety two? Right, this is out of a hundred. Well, are so, some are some graded BGS? Some of them. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of them are in BGS. I'm sure many of them are not graded. Some of these thick cards don't grade well. You know what I mean? Beautiful card. It's. I mean, listen. It, it, when I look at this, the first thing that I thought of with it was, you know, if it was 2003 exquisite, how much would it be worth? So this is the second year, right? I mean, it's not. It's not the one that you know is out of 99 RPA, so it's not a million dollar card. But when you compare it, right? This is a gorgeous card with a gorgeous patch and a great. Um, autograph, and it's not a million, it's not a hundred thousand, it's not even ten thousand dollars right now. You know, it's, it's the bidding on is under ten thousand dollars, so you know, it's interesting stuff. Um, I love it. Let me stop sharing. So, yeah, so there's that one, LeBron. So, let's see, you want to stick with basketball? 
a sure. couple of basketball. Do you want to go like you know you want to you want me to go back in time a little bit to one that I think you would? Yeah, you know what? Let's just do it. Put in for me, Molten Kobe. I love this card. This one you might have to outbid Andrew for because this. I mean, if I were a Kobe collector, I, I, this would be this would be one of the first couple that I bought. I, can, I you me, can you give me a little quick, like five minute, three minute, one minute history lesson on Molten where that came from? I mean, just Skybox Molten Metal is what this thing is called. That's what the insert here is, right? And they also had something similar called like Platinum Portraits that I think either Fleer or Skybox did also. And it's it's almost like a like a pinhole. So you look right. at the back of the card, you guys, that's not a picture. So if you, it's great that you did it like this. See Kobe there? That's not a drawing. It's not a picture. Right. You see the silhouette through the front of the card? That's actually that's actually perforated. That's yep. a perforation through the front of the card. And what's cool about these, right, is there are different versions of them, right? There's, you know, there's golds of these. This is yep. the Fusion Titanium. So it is an early, so 1998, early numbered cards, right? What's, what's great about the 90s is towards the second half, you started getting numbering on cards. A lot of cards didn't have numbers. When Kobe came in, it was, it was, it was the thing. It's, it's, I believe, part of what makes the PMG set as interesting and collectible to folks as it is because you know that it's numbered out of, you know, out of 100 or, you know, 10 for the greens and another 90 or for football, it's numbered out of 150, 15 for the greens. It's the same kind of thing with this. Same with like, you know, hoops, bams, and then the slam bams that are out of 100 and the regular bams are out of 250, you know, same kind of thing. They started to, to experiment with these things. And this one here, I mean, it's just, it is one of the most iconic sets ever in a high grade and not far I mean, from, you know, it's rookie year. Go take a okay, look. If you, if you guys look at this, the photo of this and, and zoom in, so you'll see the subgrades of BGS 9.5, 9.5s across the board. There is literally one tiny, this is hugely condition sensitive, right? A lot yep, of these 100%. are eight. There's a slight nick right here, which is why I think it got a nine on the edges. But yep. otherwise, a perfect card. And you don't see a lot of this card in perfect condition. No, I mean it's listen. These cards, there, there are still boxes. I mean, you you can still find boxes, but a card this condition is not coming out of the boxes anymore, right? I mean, these are it's it was molten metal was you know was the set itself, right? You know, you, they had the box. You had you know crazy inserts in them. I think they had heavy metal. They had super metal. They had explosions, um, and they had you know the 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 autographs. You name it. So I think, right. The, the the titanium had fusion parallel heavy metal and supernatural I think was what what, what, what was in yep. there and they're numbered to like 40 they're numbered to you know you name it so so the 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 fusion uh, parallels I mean these were like you know impossible to find they weren't one in a box I mean some of the answers were one in a box you know but they were just very difficult to you know to to pull these cards out and when you did pull them out they were condition sensitive this one here is really really cool. So yeah. I just figured we'd start with that just, for you. Just something to keep in mind, guys. There's a, another one of this exact same card ending a week from now, too. So just keep that in mind. So I will tell you what we've learned already from doing this. What is this? Is this our third one of these that we've done? A third PWCC episode, I think? Is it third, mm -hmm. fourth? I don't remember. Third one of these. What I've learned is you might want to buy the first one. And I'll just give you recent recency bias. When we did this on April 24th, the April 24th one, we talked about a Giannis silver PSA 10 and we said, all right, but don't go too crazy on that because don't worry. There's one coming up on the May 1st auction. The May 1st one sold for more money than the one on April 24th, right? Most likely because you didn't have to get into a bidding war on the April 24th one because the guy who would have bid against you said, ah, I'm not going up that high. I'll just bid in next week's. So it worked against the person because then when the second one came, now there's this, wow, let me get on that Giannis, right? I better get this one because there's none next week for me. If I don't get this one, who knows when the next one I'm going to get is. And that may be the case here, right? You got this Kobe. Maybe you're able to be the high bidder on this at a price. And the, the underbidder who normally might get you involved in a bidding war says, hey, I'm not going to bid this one up. I'll get the one next week. And maybe you're able to buy it. Maybe you're able to get it a little cheaper. Just, just a little fact. I'll throw in there because we literally did the same thing with the Giannis for the last two weeks. And the second one sold for a couple thousand dollars more than the first one did. So just throwing it out there. A little, little fun little tidbit from what we've learned doing this. Let's stick with basketball. We'll get the, a couple of fun basketball ones out of the way, right? So we did the Kobe. We've got a LeBron. 
There is, there's, I think, three other basketball ones. We're going to keep going in kind of like time order. The 2007 Upper Deck Premier Trios. Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Magic Johnson Auto. A triple auto of three top ten all-time NBA players. Pretty sweet card. Especially when you look at the price is less than $6,000. It's a nine. It's got a nine auto. You can take a look, obviously. You know, one of these guys came off the sticker a little bit. Um, but nine grade on the card. Very nice card. Pretty cool card, right? Pretty cool card. Upper Deck Premier from 07. Um, obviously LeBron's still playing, but you don't have too many LeBron autos now. You get these, you know, these cool ones from, you know, when he was playing, when he was, you know, under contract, he's got the Upper Deck. Um, and I've seen triple autos. I mean, you, you know, we, you do see them with Kobe, LeBron, and Michael Jordan selling for a ton. But Magic, Magic documentary, Magic, you name it, Magic mm-hmm. top ten. You know, it's not like there's a step down from Kobe to Magic. Magic was, you know, Magic was was the guy. He was the player, you know, the 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 the, the face of the league for a while with the Showtime Lakers. And to think to get, I'm pretty sure the card itself is numbered out of fifteen. Does it to show That's it on right. there? That's right, five out of fifteen. Yeah. So this is, you know, number five out of fifteen. I'm sure if I did some funky math, I would say why five is awesome. Um, and, and, you know, I would say like this. Michael Jordan wore number 23. Two plus three is five. LeBron wore number 23. Two plus three is five. Do you remember what number Magic Johnson wore? 32. 32. Three plus two is five. So you literally have the jersey Reach. number card of all of them. Card number five of 15. And 15, Reach. it's numbered out of 15. And if you add up five all of times them. three. Right, and all of them, all of them, but add them up. Right, yeah, what do you get? Two plus three plus two plus three plus three plus two is fifteen. Number after fifteen. New, Boom. Jersey number. Crazy. <laughs> Jersey number. Let's go. Extra bonus price. Anyway, just a real cool one with three, three of the, the all-time greats on the same card. We'll get into more modern now. Just two more. What would a weekly auction without one of the sickest Luca rookie autos be? The 2018 Select Signatures Gold Prism Luca Rookie Auto, number one of 10 in PSA 10. An on card Luca Auto, PSA Pop 1. It's gold out of 10. Everybody loves gold, but when you're buying gold, what's better than buying number one of 10 in gold, too? It's basically like one of one versus, you know, this is just kind of it, right? So again, it is the 2018 Select Signatures. Gold Prism Luca Rookie Auto number one of ten. Let's see if you can see if there it is. Gorgeous card. Can I it's- tell you something? So I, I wanted to buy this card. I don't think it was a gold one. I think it was the green one. What 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 upset me or frustrated me about this card was it doesn't have a rookie stamp on it, even though this is his rookie card. Do you know why? Because it's an auto. I, I don't know. I don't know why. But but it doesn't have the rookie stamp, even though this is his rookie card. That's weird. It's definitely a rookie. I mean, it's definitely his rookie year. It's 2018. It's clear cut, you know, rookie auto. And it's on card, right? It's on card. Beautiful card. I I love this card a lot. And card number one of 10, which is great. Mm -hmm. And with Luca, his jersey number being 77, you got me. I was going to try to do some funky math with one and 10. That's 11. You know, I don't know how many Luca. This is before he was on his James Harden diet. Leave Luca alone. You know, some of us are just big bone. You know, I mean, this is just how it works. But look at this card. This card is an absolute stunner. I'd love to give you a comp, but there are none. This is this is a pop one, right? PSA ten, number one of ten on card gold Luca rookie auto. Currently a twenty three five. I mean, just just a, a real blazer of a card. Blazer. The, the only thing, so I, I'm. We have one more basketball card, but I just want to switch right over really quick to one card that 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 may beat this one in price. It is the 2000 Bowman Chrome Refractor Tom Brady rookie in BGS nine. So Brady is premier rookie card Bowman Chrome. This card is one that you normally would expect to see in the premier auction. Um, it's definitely going to sell for premier auction prices and it's sitting in the weekly auction which means you might be able to find you know a little bit of bargain it's the one on the far right there you go because it's a refractor i mean it's sitting at fifty thousand dollars as we talk i mean totally premier auction worthy great looking card yeah. bgs nine. three nine five subs with an eight with surface three nine five subs which you don't see too often 
So this is just a real nice looking Brady rookie. If you're in the market for a Brady refractor, BGS nine, gorgeous card that may not have the eyeballs on it that a premier auction would. So right. Maybe you're able to maybe you're able to you know to get this one a little under the radar. Um, you know, I will tell you. This is basically a premier auction anyway because you look at that Luca. That's a twenty-seven thousand dollars card. There are several. We can go through it. There are several cards that are going to be premier auction worthy. And this particular weekly auction is the only game in town this week. There are no auctions ending. There's no golden auction. There's no premier right now for PWCC. You know, Heritage has one going ending. You know, days. So this is it for auctions ending. This is this this is the one. But. You normally are not going to find a card like this in, in the weekly auction. Um, it just goes to show you, man, that you know the quality of, of cards that are being auctioned off of PWCC, not just in the premiere, but in the in the weekly. If you were to just if you were to do that, you you'd see a couple of pretty significant cards. We've talked about a few of them already, um, but yeah, there's some there's some real nice stuff in the in the weekly auction. You want to go to the Jaw card that's left, and we can finish out basketball. There is a, a sick. Gold 2019 Panini Contenders Optic Gold Ja Morant Rookie Auto out of 10. It's a PSA 9. So gold, high demand rookie set, Ja. He's in the second row. Look at that card. I mean, you know, all the stuff I just said there, you'd think it would be selling for more than this. At least I think it would be selling for more than this. Just a gorgeous card, right? It's PSA 9, so it's all graded. There's only 10 of these cards in any grade. Um, so just a real slick jaw auto rookie, right? Gold, which gold is the, you know, this is it, man. You can make any card gold and people are going to go after it because that's just the way it is now. Everybody's going for gold. Everybody's going for the gold. So, um, yeah. So anyway, there's, there, there's the fun, right? We've talked, we talked about the two crazy high end ones. We've done basketball. What's, what would you like to talk about next? My friend, we've got basketball out. How about some hockey? Sydney Crosby. This is, a, this, is a, this is a dense episode. We're at fifty-two minutes, so yeah, I mean, people could do their cards. their own research. There's a lot of cards. I just got a couple, just two or three more. I mean, I can stick with Tom Brady. You want to do the 2014? I'll, I'll stick with Tom Brady. This gold 2014 select gold prism Tom Brady out of ten in BGS nine five. Take a look at this one, guys. 2014 select gold prisms Tom Brady. Another gold, another Tom Brady. Check Taylor's BGS 9.5. Just want to bring attention to it. It's a gold Brady BGS 9.5. There's none higher than this. This is going to end cheap because this is like one of those BGS no subgrades. Is it on no. the back? No, no subgrades. No subs. So there you go. It's I mean, and cheap. It's at $5,000 right now. But it is a gold Brady select out of 10. Um, only a couple more to go over if you're willing to bear with me. There's, uh, let's just go to, let's go to, let's go to, uh, uh, soccer for you because you love this stuff. There's a 2014 Prism World Cup signature Messi auto. It's a PSA 10. So 2014 World Cup Messi. This one right nice here? looking card. No, it's an autograph. There you go. That one. There's two of them. One's a PSA 10, one's a BGS 9.5. There's a PSA 10. Take a look at the 10. I mean, you can look at them both, right, and, and see where the story is. But I, I I pulled the 10 out because it's a PSA 10. You got the BGS 9.5 with the 10 also, which that's personal preference. And look at the pricing. Nothing too crazy in between. So there you go, 2014 Prism. This was only sitting at $1,525. A Messi Auto World Cup from 2014 in PSA 10. Real nice card. I love, I love Messi's signature. I love when he signs Leo at the bottom. There you go. So two of these, 9.5 with a 10 auto on the BGS. What's the BGS one sitting at if you click back? 13.25. So slightly less, slightly less. I mean, you know, personal preference on grading there, but you got you got two options. Um, and then the last one to, to take a look at is, uh, I'm pretty sure their game three is today. I expect the Rangers to handle them, but I said it was going to be a seven-game series. The, the, you know, the, the Penguins always seem to give, you know, the New York teams a little trouble, unless they're the Islanders just three years ago. They swept them. Um, Sydney Crosby's a beast. Had a nice goal yesterday. The 2005 SP Authentic Sydney Crosby Rookie Auto out of 9.99. One of his. I mean, there are a, a, a few Crosby. You know, let's call them iconic cards. That word's used a lot, but this is one of them. It's one that it's right there. It's the, the first one. You got it. I mean, it's it's if if Crosby collectors close their eyes and say, okay, tell me the cards that you want of Sydney Crosby. 
the cup comes up, this one comes up. Like this is just like a, a real cool hockey card of a great who's still doing it at a high level. It's true gem plus subgrades if you take a look at the subs on this one. Yep. Nine, Ten, five, seven, ten. Nine. Yep. So real nice card. Hockey guys in the playoffs right now, still doing it at a real high level. Um, you know, we want to try to touch on all the sports, all the stuff that's out there for you guys. We got some soccer, we got some baseball, we got some some you know some football, some basketball. We went kind of all over the map. We did a little Desert Shield. <laughs> this was only sixty five hundred dollars presently. Um, yeah, so I mean, there's the premiere. And guys, listen, don't forget a couple of the options in in the PWCC premiere. If this, maybe this is the first time listening to us, and you haven't heard me do my spiel about this. The PWCC tech is crazy, right? They make it real easy for you to bargain hunt on this stuff, right? You can go in, Andrew will show you, or he's shown you before, you can look at our other episodes and he did like a whole tutorial on it. If you go right up to the top, there is, um, you know, where you're able to sort, sort by price, you name it, there's a power buyer, right? Click power buyer on. And what that will give you is PWCC has already sorted out cards that are currently priced with a high bid right there power buyer if you put that on hit apply that's it easy as that click toggle it hit apply and they're going to show you cards that they currently have if you sort by highest price if you want it's the way i do it cards that are out there that are uh currently low uh versus what the appraisal value is what 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 recent sales are what that card is expected to sell for so you're able to basically bargain hunt the Brady we talked about is on it. The LeBron we talked about is on it. Take a look at that 0304 Topps Chrome Sealed Wax. Andrew's favorite thing in the world right now. That's a that's a decent price for the I mean, sealed wax. What's the talk of the town today? Yep. Flawless. It's Opening flawless. up a box and getting it. Right. So, I mean, this is a cool way of bargain hunting. You know, you can do this and then say you're a Kobe guy. Let's do it again. Let's do Kobe. Remember we found some really cool Kobe's last time? Hit the back button. Keep on the power seller. Oh, you're, you're, you're checking out a Jordan. Look at this. This is what happens. See, right? Especially with the eye appeal on that. That's gorgeous Jordan. And all you did was sort by power buyer, and you're like, oh, I found one. I found a card I think I like. Really nicely centered Jordan. I, I don't oh, yeah. understand how they got a nine on this centering. It's just a nice looking card. And it's got the that's PWCC. Not, that's not a nine centering. Um, top to bottom, maybe? I mean, I'm looking on my phone, so I can't really see the top. looks a little bit more than the bottom. But, still, yeah, I mean, it's not a 9 center ring. It's definitely nicer than that. I like the card. I like it a lot. Hit back for me. Let's have some fun. Type Just in type in Kobe. Kobe. Yeah, let's see what kind of cool Kobe's there are that are bargains right now. The issue with Kobe is he has so many cards. He spans just... I mean, three eras, basically. He, he, so it's, it's difficult. It's challenging. You know, here's the Fleer era. You have the Skybox, Stardate, all that stuff. Oh. And he has the Upper Deck era in the 2000s. And then he was Panini heavy. But I mean, I mean you got an these... Eminence Auto, which is gorgeous there at a, de at a decent price. Can you do me a favor? Pull up that Stardate one. This, okay. If you guys saw uh, some posts on Instagram about this. So Jesse, who sees a ton of these yep. cards. Gorgeous he said card. this is the nicest looking, most clear copy he's seen. Uh, I mean, the corners are beautiful. That's a cool card. I like this that's card a, a lot. That's a really cool card. The, you and, know, and, the, and the, the, Adidas, the other company, as he referred to them. But yeah, scroll words. down. I'll no wonder he chucks five air balls versus the Jazz in these, <laughs> in these kids. <laughs> scroll down. Go look in the hundreds. And this is the thing, guys. You can take you can take your time. You can go down and say, all right, you know, if you got a budget, I want to buy some Kobe's. They will they will show you the cards that are bargain Kobe's. Remember we found the press pass auto last time around, which is really cool. I got a message from somebody saying that I've never even knew that card was out there. I'm going to totally be bidding on that, right? Which is why we're doing this and what this feature allows you to do. That's a cool I auto. Like right? How much is it? $900 for a Kobe oh, auto with a piece of the floor, much. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Spin is, is selling one uh, of Jordan's. That's a similar one. That's a very Jordan's green Kobe. Last you see that one? Before. Which one? Oh, very green. Right there, the one that's that's go down. Yes, very green. Right there. Very, very hulked out Kobe rookie. Very A lot of greening. If everybody has ever listened to us or any other episode talk about greening on a card, that's it. Scroll down a little more. Yeah, look at that. Electrifying. There's some really cool Kobe's. I mean, this is just fun. If you're a Kobe guy, if you're a Devontae Graham guy, Whoever it might be, there you go. You got some cool stuff. I got the hiccups here. I'm gonna get rid of them. Um, look at that card. Yeah, man. I mean, that's I mean, 150 bucks. I know that's auctions, but look, you got you know that day. There's another auto. 
This is I cool. Mean, floor, and he signed right on the floor. He signed the floor. I mean, that's pretty sweet. Look at that card, Ed. How much? $120? Well, these are auctions, Cage. They're not going to end at $100. Have you ever done that's auction? what it's. That's what it's at now, right? I can't tell you what it's going to be at tomorrow, but right now, you if you're bidding, you got to beat somebody at $120. I can only give what it's at right now, right? This titanium so, metal universe is cool. You, it, it's yeah. one of those cards that looks better when you have it in person. That's the My favorite. One. Wow. You don't get to see a lot of these. Don't try to cross the Kobe at tops 50th. PSA will give you a nine on this, but this is beautiful. 10 centering, 395 subgrades. Uh, really, really. I love this card. I don't know why. It's an auction, but it's only at $40. Um, scroll back up. You don't have to search anymore. Just one last thing I'll mention. If folks get all the way up, go go all the way up really quick. You'll notice down a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit, just down a little bit. You'll notice, guys, that right in the middle of the screen there with yellow is something called Flash. That's another fun feature just introduced by PWCC. Um, that is, those are cards that were added to the, the weekly auction. As long as you get it in, it's in your vault, and you're able to click that button through Wednesday at midnight, um, you're able to get it in the auction ending on Sunday. So some of these cards were put in on Wednesday. Today is Saturday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Friday. These are like three, four day old. They haven't had the eyeballs that a lot of people, you know, have for cards that have been in there for ten days. So it's one of those things where you know maybe you're able to catch a bargain. Maybe you're, you don't have you know so many people competing against you for the same card. Um, just another fun one that flash. It allows you to get some liquidity if you happen to be a, a, a Vault user. You're sitting that Wednesday and say, okay, I'd like to sell this one. Uh, look, Jaws having a great series, but I think he might be eliminated by the, by the middle of next week. I want to sell this now. It's one of those features that you just do not get from any place else. You know, Wednesday night, in or out of your Vault, into the auction, sold on Sunday um, on, on the weekly auction. So just another one to take a look at. Um, if you're looking to buy, you might be able to use that power buyer and those flash functions to, you know, find some, find some cards you like at a price you like. Anything else to add, my friend? We just crossed the hour. Perfect. Love you, Luca Nation. Take we'll care, be back everybody. tomorrow. So thank you all for listening to another episode of Lucas, Tigers, and Bronzo Mai. I wanted to tell you about a new service that we have starting as of today, and I'm really, really excited to bring it to you guys. So... As a part of our partnership with SGC, we got 50 free submissions every single month. And many of you have taken advantage of that. And it's amazing that we could have the opportunity to 650 episodes, 675 episodes in, to go ahead and give back to our community. As people were sending those cards in, they asked, can we send 5, 10, 20 more cards to you guys? We'll pay for it, but we wanted them graded with SGC. You guys know SGC is turning cards around in 13 to 14 business days, uh, have incredible customer service, and their secondary market values are going up day after day after day. And that's exciting for the hobby and exciting for the grading landscape. So we didn't want to just rush into it. We wanted to do it right. And what we did was I relocated here to Boca Raton, Florida. I opened up a P.O. box maybe five minutes away from SGC, and I will be hand delivering and hand picking up the cards so you don't have to worry about anyone else touching your cards. It will be me, and I will update you every step of the way. So here's how it's gonna work. I'm gonna personally pick up the cards from a PO box, prep them, new card saver, new penny sleeve, and deliver them to SGC every single Tuesday. Why Tuesday? Well, it lets the stragglers over the weekend come back through on Monday, and gives me a day to prep, and it basically gives SGC the entire week to work on grading those cards. Once your cards pop, only then at the end of the process will you be paying for the service. It's $25 per card, simple as that, and the turnaround times have never been faster. We're hearing right now 13, 14, less than 20 business days. So there it is, 9170 Glades Road, number 135 is the P.O. Box in Boca Raton, Florida, 33434. 9170 Glades Road, number 135, Boca Raton, Florida, 33434. Of course, you could shoot me an email or shoot me a text anytime, and I'm always available. Many of you already have my email. It's Goldberg at gmail.com or my cell phone number 215-519-9154. Reach out with any questions. I could walk you through the process. I've hopped on the call with quite a few of you, and I'm happy to do that. Love you, Luca Nation.